Al Jazeera, I want to tell you straight away about some breaking news that has just come in. Uh, we are told, sources have told Al Jazeera that Hamas has submitted its response to the U.S. outlined ceasefire proposal. That's coming as Hamas and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad group issued a joint statement expressing readiness to reach a deal. Now, according to sources, they have made some amendments. The amendments include a withdrawal from the entire Gaza Strip, including the Rafah crossing and the Philadelphia corridor. We'll try and get you uh, more details uh, as they come in, and then we'll share them uh, with you. Um, at this uh, juncture, I want to bring in our guest, uh, James Elder. He is a UNICEF spokesperson, and he joins us live from Der el in uh, Gaza. Uh, James, uh, grateful to have you with us. Um, you're back in Gaza. How would you describe the situation? Hell on earth, Leila. Um, after what happened over the weekend to be today in Al-Aqsa Hospital, um, where, which was already packed, already beyond capacity last week, and then to have 400 people with these horrendous wounds of war come in in the space of an hour. So again today, walking around with a doctor, with these incredible physicians who are doing 24-hour shifts, we're walking over children with these wounds of war on the floor, you know, with head, with head injuries, because the capacity has just been absolutely, absolutely devastated. It felt like it could have been day one of this horrendous war on children. It is, of course, day 250. And then to leave the hospital, and of course, all we see is rubble. I, I, I walked outside and, and there, is a, there is a lady who's in tears because her family home has been destroyed, her husband's killed, and she just wants a, wants a tent. Leila, as you and your viewers know, these stories are everywhere, but they're relentless, and that's why we hope this talk of a ceasefire for those, those people in power who seem to be honest, utterly disconnected from the suffering of the civilians of Gaza. Hopefully now this is that moment because people, from what I'm seeing this time around, look like they're just hanging on. Just hanging on. I mean, the atrocities that have been unfolding have been truly shocking. What do you make, you know, as, as you're witnessing the situation there where you are on the ground and the wrangling over the ceasefire that just continues? Yeah, it is. I mean, I think, you know, we have to move beyond the words. We have to look at, at the evidence on the ground and the evidence on the ground literally in terms of the rubble or literally with wounded children in tears on the ground is there for all to see. The intent here has been the devastation of Gaza and the devastation of Gaza from schools and, and universities, the education to the agriculture, to, to the learning capacity. It's, it's, it's been ubiquitous. Uh, and we see this across now the Gaza Strip, to see a million people have had to move from Rafa, exhausted, shell-shocked, to try again and find another home. Believe it or not, there is a shortage now of tents. And people are under plastic sheeting, it's 45 degrees. So I think it's very clear what the reality is that people are enduring. Now, of course, they hold on to hope. People have to hold on to hope, Leila. When I meet people again, people I've become friends with, and I say, how are you, which sounds like such a silly question, their response is alive. This is, people are grateful for being alive. It is insane that they, 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 this beautiful society is being reduced to gratitude for being alive. So. Yes, the ceasefire needs to look into the eyes of doctors who ask me, how much more evidence does the Western world need? Or children who simply plead, plead to see their parents again. This is what this ceasefire hopefully, hopefully will bring. James Elder, UNICEF spokesperson. Sir, thank you so very much. And uh, I want to go now to Imran Khan, uh, who is in the Jordanian capital, Amman, uh, just to get uh, some more on that breaking news uh, that we've been telling you about. Uh, uh, Imran, uh, I understand you're joining us on the phone. Can you hear me? Okay? 45 degrees centigrade is insanely hot. It's like 100 degrees plus, uh, 100 degrees Fahrenheit plus, 113. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I've got you. Uh, Imran, uh, so uh, as we've uh, just uh, uh, broke the news that uh, Hamas has submitted its response uh, to the U.S. Uh, outlined ceasefire proposal, what are you hearing from your side? Well, what Hamas sources have told Al Jazeera is they are ready and have submitted a response to the proposed uh, ceasefire deal.
The contrast between this and the words are violence type bullshit from the previous Zionist woman is crazy. Yeah. This is why I always try to bring the conversation back to like issues that actually matter the most, right? This isn't to say that like anti-Semitism can be easily dismissed or whatever. I'm not saying that at all. But if you are using anti-Semitism as a way to shield and deflect away from the actual point of contention here, you are a bad person. Okay? It is incredibly, unimaginably selfish. Unimaginably self-centered. It's just Western chauvinism in display when you behave like this. When you're like, well, you know... Tens of thousands of fucking children being ruthlessly slaughtered by this apartheid ethno state with our tax dollars is one thing, but my feelings being centered in this conversation is a must. That's crazy. If you defend that, then yeah, you are not going to be welcomed in progressive circles, and that's perfectly understandable. That's perfectly valid. Okay? That's insane. It's insane to look at all this death and destruction and be like, well, I have some disagreements with the Israeli state. But ultimately, I think it's a good thing. It's a good force. The force for good on the planet. It's not. This is why I always ask, do you believe Israel is an apartheid? Do you agree with the 18 international human rights organizations that have declared Israel an apartheid since 2021? Do you agree that Israel is currently conducting a genocidal ethnic cleansing campaign in Gaza? You know, do you believe the, your eyes? Do you believe what you see in front of your eyes? Or do you find ways to justify it? to the Qatari and Egyptian mediators. This is a joint statement that they have released. So it's now very clear that they are willing to negotiate. Earlier in the day, uh, we heard from a Hamas official uh, after the resolution uh, news had broken in the Security Council that Hamas were willing to send negotiators. This is now a step forward to that. They've responded to the Egyptians and the Qataris. Hamas are now ready to do something that will get to a ceasefire. The ball is now in Israel's court. Remember the, cease, the original ceasefire deal that Biden put forward? He always said, this is the Israeli ceasefire deal. Israel was quite surprised by that. Um, and what Israel said was, we are willing to perhaps commit to the first phase of this, which is an original six-week ceasefire deal, and then um, the release of captives. Uh, but what Anthony Blinken has done for the last four days is, uh, is talk about the idea that this is on Hamas. Hamas need to respond. Hamas need to do something. This is on Hamas. Well, this is now Hamas's response. Hamas have quite clearly um, said they are willing to negotiate. And this Literally two-thirds of Israeli localities, roughly 700 to 1,050, are Jewish only. I'm not just referring to the regional council stuff. It is legally not possible for Arabs to buy a house in them. According to the way their township contracts work, many were built on lands forcibly confiscated from Palestinian refugees and slash citizens of Israel. But people will say there is no apartheid. Imagine if America built hundreds of localities only for white people while none were built for black people. Oh, wait. Exactly. The only difference is that, like, even in America, you have redlining, right? In America, the American government did all that shit. But as it stands, there's nothing in the fucking paper, with the exception of Portland, or not Portland, Oregon, until, like, a couple of years prior. There's nothing in the legal rule books that says black people can't live here or that white people can purposely discriminate against black people and stop them from living here. In Israel, it is in the rule book. That is the major difference. So it's even like it's even beyond the the white supremacy that we, you uh, see in contemporary American society. That's something that I think is very important. I know you weren't trying to minimize that. I I'm just simply stating that like if you think the situation is really bad here, um, or historically was really bad here, like understand that it is worse in Israel. Let's see what happens in the next couple of days. Remember, on Wednesday, uh, Anthony Blinken is in Doha. There is a press conference happening at 5 p.m. local time with the Emir of Qatar. He's going to have to take in this Hamas response and talk about that at the ceasefire, uh, at the, um, sorry, the uh, press conference. So right now, it's very breaking news. Uh, there's only a, a few details that we have, but the clear message is from both Palestinian Islamic Jihad and Hamas that they are willing to talk.
They're willing to talk, Imran, but a salient detail here, according to sources, is they, um, they have made some amendments. And the amendments include a withdrawal from the entire Gaza Strip, including uh, Rafah Crossing and the Philadelphia uh, Corridor. Are these non-starters, though, for the Israelis? Well, Hamas have actually always called for a permanent ceasefire. That was always what they were working towards. All of these are now just negotiating details. Whether they're negotiating right now in public, which is what's happening, or whether they're negotiating in private, Hamas's position has always been very clear. A permanent ceasefire. That's something Israel does not want to do. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has always been very, very clear. We need to destroy Hamas both politically and mili militarily. Most of his actual generals, most of the Israeli security establishment, thinks that that goal may not be able to happen in the way the prime minister wants. So although they've been clear on the details, they haven't changed, their, Hamas haven't changed their position. It's always been about a permanent ceasefire for Hamas. It's always been about a permanent ceasefire for Hamas. I'm just wondering, in terms of from uh, the Israeli leadership's perspective, uh, specifically uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, um, you know, if, they, if he were to accept a ceasefire, would that essentially spell out the end of his government? That is a question that I... Sorry, uh, can you still hear me? Yes, you're, we can hear you, Imran. Right, uh, that is a question better put to analysts and the people who are, right. have an opinion. All I can report is the news to you. And the news, and sorry, I'm, I'm pausing slightly because it is a very awkward question to answer. Here's, here's the thing. In Israel, the common thinking is that if uh, there's an end to the war and there is a, a new election Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu loses. So he continues the war because he wants to stay in power. That is an opinion that many people in Israel hold. I think that's the only way I can answer that question. Gotcha. No worries. So, uh, Imran, in terms of, you know, uh, up to now, we, I mean, we've heard today from uh, U.S. Secretary of State uh, uh, Blinken, Antony Blinken, but I'm wondering, have we heard from um, uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu endorsing uh, this uh, resolution that was passed in uh, the uh, U.N. Security Council? Well, let me tell you, the response to the U.N. Security Council resolution was incredibly muted. The only real thing that we heard was actually a statement by the uh, U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, who turned around and said, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu uh, has committed to a ceasefire proposal. Compare that to what happened with the last three ceasefire proposals when Israel went after the United Nations and said the United Nations are anti-Israeli, the United Nations are anti-Semitic. Um, they couldn't do that with this resolution because it was U.S.-led. And even the Israelis would not criticize the U.S. Now, backstage, uh, there was a lot of confusion because Anthony, uh, sorry, President Joe Biden had always said that this was the Israeli proposal that they were putting forward. In Israel, there was a lot of surprise about that because they thought that they would commit to the first stage of it, which is... Enjoyed Hades too? Fuck Gaza. They are all terrorists. Fuck Gaza. Fuck Gaza. They are all terrorists. Enjoy Hades too. Enjoy Hades. Um, here's Qatar and Egypt announcing that they've received a response from Hamas of the Palestinian factions regarding the truce proposal. Uh, the state of Qatar and the Arab uh, Republic of Egypt announced that they've received today a response from the Palestinian Islamic Resist Resistance Movement, Hamas, and the Palestinian factions regarding the most recent proposal for a ceasefire deal and the exchange of prisoners and detainees. The two sides confirmed that their joint mediation efforts with the United States of America will continue until agreement is reached and that the mediators will examine the response and coordinate uh, with the party's concern regarding the next steps. There's a six-week ceasefire, and then the release of some captives. And then another stage. But what they didn't want, 
is the idea that the third stage would be Israeli troops withdrawing from the Gaza Strip and the rebuilding of Gaza. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has been absolutely clear about this, and I'm going to repeat this again. He wants to destroy Hamas politically and militarily. In his close circles and in the far-right government, the ceasefire deal is being seen as allowing Hamas to survive. And that's a big political problem for the prime minister. Imran Khan uh, reporting. Uh, Imran, grateful uh, for uh, your reporting and uh, thank you. Now to uh, Imran Khan, who's over. Do you think announcing publicly that Hamas gave a response before actually parsing the response is a mistake? I feel like opening the floor to speculation is a bad idea. No. I don't think it's a bad idea. I think it's a good idea because Hamas has said that they are open to negotiations as long as there's a permanent hostil end to hostilities since October 8th. So I think that uh, I think that it's a good thing because they probably see that like the American media keeps claiming that Israel like uh, this is Israel's ceasefire agreement and Hamas is like fucking up the. Like right now, Israel is trying to desperately make it stick that uh, Hamas are the ones who are like ruining the pathway to peace. In the Jordanian capital, Amman and uh, Imran, of course, uh, these developments are just coming through to us in the past uh, 45 minutes or, to or so. Talk us through what we know so far about Hamas's response. Well, what Hamas have told Al Jazeera is there are amendments they want to the ceasefire proposal. Firstly, uh, what they're saying is they want a complete withdrawal from the entire Gaza Strip, and that includes uh, the Rafah crossing and the Philadelphia Corridor. The Philadelphia Corridor is basically the border between Egypt and uh, the Gaza Strip. Now, uh, that was delivered by uh, Ismail Haniyeh, uh, the political bureau chief of Hamas, all the way to the prime minister and foreign minister of Qatar and the Egyptian mediator. Hamas have now responded to this. They want to talk, but they have these amendments. It's all about whether Israel now is willing to accept those amendments. The fact that it, uh, Hamas have responded actually means that there is a movement on these ceasefire talks. These ceasefire talks had actually stalled for a very long time. Anthony Blinken, the U.S. Secretary of State, has been in the region, and he has always said during his visit over the last couple of days that this is about Hamas. Hamas need to respond. Hamas, uh, the onus is on Hamas to be able to say yes to the deal. Well, Hamas have now responded. So that kind of goes away now. So uh, Hamas also about four or five hours ago said that they were willing to send negotiators. They So Hamas are now playing ball effectively. But Israel has a problem now. And here's the, the effective problem. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has been absolutely clear about the end game of his war on Gaza. He wants to destroy Hamas both politically and militarily. He hasn't changed that effective um, plan. But now Hamas have responded. They want to talk. This is going to be very difficult for Israel uh, to actually go, oh, maybe we can't talk about this because this was an American resolution in the Security Council. So there you go. What we have, what we... <laughs> Ceasefire talks in turmoil as Hamas responds to proposal. Talks to bring about a ceasefire and hostage deal could stop the war in Gaza were thrown into doubt Tuesday evening when Israel characterized a Hamas response to the latest proposal as a rejection. Bro, your job in the media, and I cannot stress this enough, is it to uncritically report what Israel is saying? Your job in the media, when one side is saying that it's raining and the other side is saying it's sunny out, is not to just say one side is saying it's raining. It's to open the fucking window and look outside. What the fuck? Is it raining outside or is it sunny, motherfucker? You can't turn around and be like, well, the side we trust unconditionally is saying that it's raining outside so we will not open the window and we will not peek outside we will not do that and if you do actually say hey look outside it's actually sunny you're a fucking liar you're a genocidal monster
Do not demand I look outside. Hamas has submitted his response to the Qatari mediators, proposing amendments to the Israeli proposal, including a timeline. That's not a fucking amendment. Including a timeline for a permanent ceasefire and complete Israeli withdrawal from Gaza. That is a part of the proposal. You can't be like, hey guys, this proposal means a ceasefire and a permanent end to hostilities. And then Hamas is like, yeah, we like that. Here's a ceasefire and permanent end to hostilities. Can we get a timeline on this, please? And go, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. Hold on. We never said there was a timeline and a permanent end to hostilities. Excuse me. Our permanent end to hostilities proposal does not actually mean a permanent end to hostilities. Where'd you get that idea from? Like, even the framing of this is so funny. It's like, ceasefire talks in turmoil as Hamas responds to proposal. How is it in fucking turmoil if Hamas is like, yeah, we like it. Here's a, can you give us a timeline, please, of how we're going to implement this? No! But in a potential sign of how Israel views the proposed amendments, one Israeli official speaking to CNN analyst Barak Ravid described Hamas's response to the original deal as a rejection. Israel received Hamas's response. Hamas rejected the proposal for a hostage deal, which was laid out by President Biden in his speech. They're trying to take advantage of the fact that the American media doesn't really like listening to uh, or reporting on what Hamas officials are saying, which is why I'm saying it's good that Qatari and Egyptian envoys are actually communicating Hamas's desires to speak because those are state actors that are within the sphere of American influence. So when state actors within American sphere of influence are saying, no, 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 Hamas is actually responding to the proposals, that's a good thing. They have to report on that. If, if they don't say that, then all you have is basically Twitter accounts posting Hamas telegrams. And Twitter accounts posting Hamas telegrams would be newsworthy in a normal situation because that is one aspect of their, uh, you know, uh, that is one way that they can communicate their desires. But we know that the American media will never cover that shit. So that's why I say Egypt and, and Qatar are coming out and saying, no, 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 they are responding is a good thing overall. This follows a United Nations Security Council vote on Monday approving a U.S.-backed resolution calling for a ceasefire and laying out a plan to end the war. The comprehensive, comprehensive three-stage peace deal which sets out conditions intended to lead to the eventual release of all remaining hostages in return for a permanent ceasefire and withdrawal, withdrawal of Israeli forces was first laid out by President Joe Biden May 31st. So is it President Biden's proposal? Is it the Israeli proposal? Is it the Hamas proposal? Why not all of it? Oh, <laughs>